My name is Darren Butler, and I'm a local Aboriginal man, and my traditional land is from Hinchinbrook Island and Dunk Island and those surrounding areas. And years ago, my people used to live out on, on the reef, the Great Barrier Reef, 200 miles out, before the sea level rose. And we've still got old stories from out there without, when our people were coming back to the islands. And we have a very strong connection with the, with the reef, the Great Barrier Reef, and, the, and, the, and all the oceans and all the animals that live amongst us. Um, our traditional name for Hinchinbrook Island is Maramudanami, uh, Dunk Island, Kunanglebar, and Tamana Island, Baby, Badara, Mother. So they've still got all their traditional names. We have all those things. Um, we've got tree climbing kangaroos that live on our island in the rainforest. Um, we've got fish traps there that are older, like than the pyramids in Egypt. They're welded together by oysters. Uh, we still use them today. And, <clears throat> and my people, we have a very strong association with, with our land and our ocean. And my people, we used to swim from island to islands uh, using the, the great currents that rush through the Hinchinbrook to the Dunk Island group. And yeah, it would have been a really good way of life living that way again, but unfortunately I can't. And yeah. Um, so Hinchinbrook Island is, is like my clan group, where, I, where the saltwater clan group for the Warragamai group in Ingham. So we're attached to those guys, but we're the saltwater group. And what we have with, since the early 90s, we have, um, we've been protecting our turtles and dugons. So we've stopped all the hunting. So no one hunts turtles or dugons around the Hinchinbrook Island area. And now they've came back in great numbers and thriving very and doing very well. And one day we might lift the ban and start hunting again, but I feel we don't need to. Um, I love looking at those animals swimming around. It tells me that everything is healthy. The, the ocean is healthy. You know, I, I love it when I'm down the strand here and I see a turtle swim past. And I say to myself, the water's healthy. This is beautiful. I love seeing this. Yes. Um, and another thing that we have in place, we, we have a tumra. It's called a tumra, a traditional use of marine resources agreement. And that's with the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. So, uh, you know, we help in with scientific studies and with the management of the marine park. And we've also have ranges that we have nine ranges, Aboriginal ranges, sea rangers that look after our sea country. We have boats and all that kind of stuff. They go out and do patrols. They can book people. So if you see a bunch of black fellas in a boat coming for you, they can book you. <laughs> and they've got ranger gear, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So they're fully qualified, these guys, to do all that kind of stuff um, and protect, and protect all, our, all, our land, all our sea country. Yeah, that's our ancient land. And like... And why I love my sea country is because I know I'm going to go back there. Because we call that, that's my jewel in. That's my ancient land. So when we die, that's where my spirit goes. It goes back out there to my people out there. Uh, I think your spirit goes to heaven. Mine doesn't. It goes there. Oh, yeah. So, and... And I might um, tell you a bit of a story. This is a rainforest story, because I'm a rainforest Aboriginal and also a sea-faring Aboriginal from a rainforest islands. And um, this story starts all the way up in Cooktown, and it's about this big rock up here, um, Castle Hill. But he's got other names. Um, Kutaringa is one. That's his real name. And it's a dingo. That's the last dingo out that could live in the rainforest. And it's, he started all the way up, up in Cooktown. 
and the last kangaroo in the rainforest is over there where Cape Cleveland. When you look over Cape Cleveland, you'll see like a little round thing on the end. That's the kangaroo with just his head sticking out of the water. And the story goes like this. So the, the kangaroo, he jumped into the rainforest. He came down from Cooktown. And he came down to Cairns. And you see the pyramids? You know that pyramid mountain there? Well, its real name is Jarrigan, and that means turkey nest. You know the little scrub turkey that runs around in the bush? Like that? Him. So that's, that's his nest. And that's where the dingo came in, around there, and he chased the kangaroo all the way down here. Because this is the end of the rainforest, just out the back here where blue water. So the dingo chased him out here, and the kangaroo, he jumped out into the water. And he's got his head sticking out of the water, and his whole body is under the water like that. And the, and the dingo, he will sit there and wait. And this is a law for our children, not to go in the water with kangaroos, all right? That's why the dog is sitting there, because he knows if he jumps in the water with that kangaroo, what that kangaroo going to do to him? He's got really strong, powerful arms and claws and legs. He will grab you, drag you under the water, lift his hind legs, and he will empty your belly into the ocean or in the water hole, wherever you are. So if you ever see a kangaroo in the water, he's not drowning. That's his protection against predators. So that story is about that. That's why that's there, and that's why Cape Cleveland's there. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, and I've got another story. Um, do, you ever, do you know why the, uh, the curlew sings out at night? You know how he sings out and makes that noise? You do? All right. Um, I'll tell you this one. This is an old story from, from my country. Um, what, why the curlew cries is because imagine a hill like this here. Up in that hill, there was a cave, and in the cave lived an owl, and he had a pet dingo. And one day, they were looking down, and they could see a curlew family there. And down the bottom, there was a billabong as well. And the curlew family, they had, a, you know, about two or three chicks with them. And so the curlew, so the curlew mum and dad, they were thirsty. It was really hot. So they said, here, you chicks, you just wait here. We're going to go down to the billabong, have a drink, and we're going to come back. And so the chicks, they waited there. And the owl, he was watching, he was watching the curlew's mum and dad go down to the river. And he said to the dingo, go down there and grab me those chicks. I want to eat them. And so the dingo did. He jumped up, he ran down, grabbed them, flinging them around everywhere, feathers everywhere, took them back up, gave them to the owl, and they sat in there and ate them. And then when the mum and daddy curlew come back, um, they looked around and they seen feathers everywhere and they're wondering, where's, where's my baby's gone? And so the father, he followed, he followed the dingo tracks all the way back to the cave. And when he got to the cave, he stood out the front. He said, dingo, I want my babies back. And if you, um, if you don't give my babies back, I'm going to kill you. But the owl, he was silent. And the dingo was silent as well. So he went up the next day. And he marched around up the front. He was dancing, everything, singing out to that dingo and the owl to come out and fight him because he wants his babies back. And after about the third or fourth day, he said to the owl and the dingo, he said, all right, you don't want to fight me. And then he seen a kangaroo running past. And he sung out to the kangaroo, he said, here, come back here. Can you help me, Mr. Kangaroo? And the kangaroo 
I said, all right, what do you want me to do? I can help you. And he goes, and he told him the story of how the, the dingo and the owl took his babies. And he's asking the kangaroo, can he help him? And the kangaroo said, okay, what do you want me to do? And the kangaroo said, no, oh, the, the father Curly said, I want you to lay out front of the cave and just eat the grass. I want you to draw that dingo out. And when he comes out chasing you, you run down past that big tree, the big fig tree down the bottom, and I'll be standing there with my big rainforest sword. And so the, the kangaroo said, all right, I can do that. That's pretty easy. So he was there laying around eating the grass and, you know, just relaxing and, you know, and, and after about the second day, the dingo, he couldn't take it anymore. You know, he was hungry again. And he said, he just got up and he come bolting out of the cave, flat out. And the, the kangaroo heard him. They got really good ear. And he jumped up real quick and he, he jumped straight down the hill and he ran down past the fig tree and the father curlew, he was there and he split him in the head with his, with his rainforest sword and the dingo just fell down, he was dead. So the curlew, uh, curlew, he dropped his rainforest sword and he marched up to the top of the cave and he said to the curlew, I mean, he said to the owl, I just killed your dingo and now I'm going to kill you. Get out here now and fight me. And the, and the owl, he didn't say a word. He was quiet. And so the, so the curlew said to him, all right then, if you don't want to come out here and fight me, I'm going to banish you to the darkness forever. And you'll never ever see the light of day. And that's why the pure white owl, he, Please put you'll your hands never together see him in the day. Please put your hands together for our storyteller. Yeah. Written every day. Yeah. The story all right. Of a well, that's it. Yeah. Is the story.